Hello everyone and welcome back to the CLSR and I'm your host, The Counselor. Today we're going to be talking about a rather sticky situation. I know speaking with some of my colleagues and even some of my clients, one question just keeps coming up, especially among men, is why did she leave me? Why did my woman walk out on me? I wasn't even aware of it. Well, it's not that you weren't aware of it. It's just you weren't paying attention to the signs. So before we start talking about why women walk away from their men, let's talk about what may be going on that you might have ignored before she heads for the door. Now, I've heard some say that uh, when their wife does walk out on them, that they were actually rather surprised. And I can understand that in some cases. However, I have some difficulty with that in all cases, simply because we know that little signs that we become accustomed to, we tend to ignore when we don't want to hear it. Like, for example, if your wife's complaining about you, and she's just complaining and complaining, and nothing's really changing, especially in her view, right? Like, you might think you've changed a little bit, but before she even walks out, maybe she is doing that. Maybe she's given some signs she's complaining about this or not getting enough attention or being with her when she needed your attention, um, actually just not feeling connected, anything she says, or she's complaining that you're not taking on certain responsibilities and the complaints are just coming, okay? And she complains and complains, and then all of a sudden, the complaining just stops, right? Now, unfortunately, we, I mean us men, we get the impression, oh my goodness, you know what? She stopped complaining. I think that it's cool. You know, everything's okay because you know what? I must be doing a lot better. However, that's not true at all. See, when she stops complaining, then you know what? She's thinking, hmm, maybe she's made up her mind. You're thinking she stopped complaining. I feel better. I'm doing better, right? However, that's not the case. See, she's building it up in her mind that she's actually had enough. And there's a decision that's got to be made. And she's going to make that decision, whether you like it or not. She's not even going to let you know in most cases. Because in her eyes, she's been letting you know. And that's one of the issues that she may be encountering. See, so by the time you realize that, right, it's too late. Because she's already made up her mind. All these signs and signals that she's been trying to give you, you haven't really been paying attention to. You've been absent-minded, right? Whether you're, you know, you're just not interested anymore, bullheaded, or you're agitated, or you're stressed out, tired, whatever the reason is, you did not pick up on the signs. And because you didn't pick up on the signs, things are changing, and they're changing drastically, right? So she stopped complaining about your behavior, right? And you mistook that as you're doing better, everything's better. But you don't really think about what you've been doing because you, if you are honest with yourself, you'll tell yourself, wow, she stopped complaining. I really haven't changed. I'm still doing the same thing that I used to do and my behavior hasn't changed. So you kind of fooling yourself because basically you're thinking, yes, this is the way I would like it. However, that's not true. And see, there's where a lot of surprise comes in from a lot of men. They give you the, I didn't know what was going on. And sometimes that is the case. However, it's much too late after that. Because after that comes the begging and the pleading. Right? But there are other signs too prior to her walking away that you have not paid attention to. Like when uh, people tell you that, you know, you didn't treat your wife too well. You know, you go out with your wife, you take her or your girlfriend, or your significant other, and you have people out there saying, you know what, um, I don't think that, you know what, you should have said that. And you might tell them, mind their own business, or what have you, right? Or just ignore them altogether, right? What That's what we do, because a lot of us get into this mindset, like, that's my business, mind your own business. And granted, you're, that's your opinion, right? But we have our own opinion, and we also have our own consequences. However, you've been told. That you didn't treat her very well at all. And 
actually, some might even said she seems to have gotten used to it. You know, she just shrugs her shoulder and shakes her head. And then you know that a lot of us have been out there and we've been around couples where you could hear one going off and one being disrespected and the other one just accepts it and ignores it for a number of reasons. And you know that that person's just, you know, you're living in your world, they're living in their world. And you know that they're not really happy. They have their happy moments, but that's when that person comes out. And you know even now if you have it, have a relationship where you go out and you see some friends and you see that negativity going on in a relationship, you just kind of ignore it. That's their relationship. However, you know what? That person probably might stay with them for a long period of time because of the circumstances. But there are ones that don't. There are ones, women that say, mm -mm, I don't think so. And men too. But we're talking about why is your woman walking on you? Could be a number of reasons why they're walking on you. But this just could be one. You've been told by people you haven't been treating her well. So, you know, even being put down comments that, you know, she might not complain about in public, but privately, you know, she said something to you. But you chose not to listen to it because you're better, right? You think. And now you're all alone. Then what you know now? You don't know nothing. So now you're sitting back doing a lot of reflecting, doing some self-evaluation after the pity party. After you cry, some tears, right? Some tears that last for years, right? So that's where you're at. But you start to do some reflection. Where do things go wrong, right? And then prior to her walking out, there are times when that human emotion comes out in us. It's just like, I don't know, it's like walking through a doorway and a sudden breeze of change hits you. Things just aren't the same. You know when it feels like something's changed, but you're not sure what? Yeah. Right? When you think about it, in your past relationships, how they may have ended, you had some feelings. See, we take that for granted. Our our natural human instinct, those feelings where you can just sense something is wrong. And that is, and that's when we ignore that feeling. Yeah, we get them. We know something's wrong, but because nobody's pointing it out to us, we're not really focusing on us. But whoa. Hindsight. And now you know. Your wife is gone or your girlfriend's gone. You had the feeling. You know, and sometimes, you know what? You could be in a situation where you can't really rectify the problem because it could have been a host of things that she's walking out. Right? We can't just say it's just those casual. There are a host of some people who can't have babies with their man. They walk away because, you know, death in the family. They walk away or abuse. They walk. There's so many reasons. It's not always just about the fault. We're talking about the recognition of what's going on and the reflection of what you're dealing with. You see, because when you thought about that feeling of something being not quite right, you have to think to yourself, hmm, it's not that I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to act on it. So then you go and ask your partner. You say, hey, you know what? Are you okay? Is everything okay? And see... Your partner responds with, no, everything's fine, you know, but you knew you still had that strong feeling that there was something wrong, but they did not acknowledge you. They just shrugged it off. They knew what they were at a point where they knew that they had made up their mind. See, so they were preparing themselves and preparing their mind in that situation where they said it's a no. So even that feeling didn't get verified because your partner said, no, everything's fine. So you thought, it's fine. But deep, deep, deep inside you, you know, it wasn't fine. You knew there was something going on. But once you got that verification that everything's fine, you moved on, right? Another sign is if sex has completely stopped. No more. Nothing. The door is closed, right? 
You are not getting none of that at all. I didn't say you deserved it. I said, that's a sign that you totally cut off and something's definitely not right. Right? So that's a big indicator. And see, even when you're trying to smooth up and be a sweet talker or try to be uh, nice about it, still, uh-uh. You get the shrug, you get the cold shoulder, you get the ignoring, right? You get the re-diverting your attention elsewhere or later, 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 later. How about later, right? All kinds of things. But when the sex is stopped completely, something's wrong. Something's not right in the hen house. And you need to ask yourself, is there something else that I might be missing? Right? That's an indication. Right? And if she does give it to you eventually, it might be out of appeasing you because they still had their minds made up. Right? They might have appeased you to go whatever. Right? Some do. This is not 100% in any case. This is just how some of it works. Right? But you knew that is almost gone away completely. That's a sign. Another sign is if she starts, you know, really paying attention to her appearance more, you know, giving a little bit more attention to her appearance, you know, and you're not, you're like kind of letting yourself be you, right? You're kind of letting yourself go, but she's all of a sudden all propped up looking like a peacock, looking all fine and dandy, taking care of her business. Looking like she ain't looked in 20 years. You know, actually looking 20 years younger. And you're wondering to yourself, damn, baby, you're looking good. But you don't know what's going on. You think she's just had a moment where she just decided she wanted to look good. No, that's not the case, my friend. There's more at play here. But you're not there yet. You're, no, nah, you are selfish. You're not picking up. And some of you, believe it or not, this is a stage where you're too afraid to say, hey, baby, like, because, you know, women love, a lot of women love to uh, take care of themselves, which is uh, rightfully so, and appreciate it, appreciate it. However, you know, that's a time where a lot of you might, you know, you don't want to question her. You might want to give her a compliment, oh, you're looking good. But you would probably never say, oh, you're looking good. Or who are you dressing up for? You know, because you might be saying, well, if things were rocky already, I don't want to really approach it like that because then she's going to start again and I'm going to start again. So I don't want to come off with that. But, you know, I, I haven't been feeling things like when you do the math and you add things up in sporadically when you have something here and there doesn't add up but when you start to see some signs here and you're interested in looking then they start to add up and some of you don't know what to do so when it comes to that situation where you see her all spruced up you know her and yourself you both been arguing not getting along at all and then all of a sudden she's all dabbed up looking all good and you know well wait it isn't for me because we haven't been getting along but then you're afraid to ask her Right? You might be because you're afraid you could agitate the situation. Or you might be afraid you don't want the answer. But the point is you lean off of it, figuring there's nothing I can say or do about it. But most importantly, you're afraid to address that right there. So you look past it. Right? And you figure, uh, but all these things that you're looking past it, all of a sudden you're building up something behind you. Right? You're building up a barrier. You look past this, look past that. Barriers are building up. Everything you overlook behind you, a wall is building until you don't see that person anymore and they're out the door, right? But if she starts caring for her appearance a little bit more than, definitely more than usual, you know what I mean? Mm -mm. Be careful. And there are times too where you could see your partner getting distant. For some reason... You just see that they're not really around as much anymore. They're keeping themselves super busy or they've just gotten distant, you know. It, it almost feels like there's no real relationship. It's almost like a high by friend type thing, you know, no connection. 
You know what I'm saying? A certain distance when even though you are, you know, seeing each other daily, there's no real connection there. So the relationship has worn, right? And then it could have been going that way for a couple months before she decides to make that one move. But see, when they get distance, you have to be aware because they can get this distracted thinking because they got all this planning going on in their mind about how they're going to get their lawyer, you know, what's going to happen. So they're thinking of all these different things. So you also have to keep in mind that that could be a time, too, where these negative vibes that, you know, because they're trying to do this in their mind and they don't really deal with you anymore, they might just focus entirely on their plans on moving forward and you just get lost in the dust. And a lot of men have said that in the last few months before it actually happened, they did notice some real changes going on in the relationship, right? Um, <laughs> one thing that's big too is like before this happens, um, if you as a man are trying to get her to go to counseling, and you're getting nowhere because you know something's wrong. You're both aware of what's going on. And if she refuses to go to any sort of marriage counseling or relationship counseling, uh, then that's a big sign that there's something wrong. And that's why I say it's, it's changed. The situation has totally changed. So you plan it, she ignores it. You plan it again, she ignores it. Or she says straight up, I'm not interested. Problematic. So you know what's coming. But some of us say, well, if we know what's coming, what do we really do? What can we really do about it when you think about it, right? So you, most of us don't see it coming. But if you do see it's coming and you're trying these things, it would only make sense that you would think to yourself, what can I really do? And now she's even starting to hang out with her friends more. I barely ever see her anymore. So she's with her friends or she's saying she's got some appointment with her friends. Or she's um, very occupied or she's got commitments that she's made. So clearly she's using her friends as an excuse. That's a sign prior to this walk up. Right? And, you know, if she's complained a lot about being emotionally neglected. But she appears to be all right. Well, once she spells out that she's emotionally neglected and you don't even pay attention to that, nah, it goes downhill from there unless you're both willing to make some drastic change. There are many signs out there. However, you got to put them together. And once you put them together, it, and a lot of us miss it, we got a lot going on, but if you can put them together, then you get an indication. However... Seeing the signs is a whole lot different for the reasons why your girlfriend left you or your wife left you. See? Suddenly you are uh, got a partner walking out the door and you are heartbroken. You're feeling alone. It's, you're stunned. Like, why did she do that to me? What did I say? What, she wasn't attracted to it? to me anymore or is there someone else that I don't even know about there are a host of reasons why she walks out and we need to discuss that and I think the major 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 reason why guys get dumped by girls is because or women is because of the attraction, right? Attraction. Like, remember the days when your woman liked you and then she became your girlfriend and then she may have become your wife. One way or another, there was something in you that triggered this attraction in her. And maybe she's not attracted anymore. I don't know. Did you get older? Were you running around? What were you doing? Did you lose your hair? Right? Did you eat too much? Did you stop working? Oh, we got to talk about it today because there's a lot of reasons why women walk out on men. 
attraction is the major one. It's just not attractive anymore. You just stop triggering her. She, she's not. You know what I mean? Maybe she's just not attractive. It might not be any other person. But that's a major thing you have to consider. And if you can't get her to feel attracted to you, there's no amount of money or convincing or begging will get her back. Because once it's gone, it's gone. Attraction is a one-time deal, right? Once you got it and you lose it, you might as well look elsewhere because it's not coming back, right? You got to understand that. You got to be able to understand that for sure. You will not be able to bring that relationship back once uh, they lose that attraction. That is a, like hitting a lottery, right? But you would like to trigger that attraction in her again and make her feel like she once did. But most of us men, we don't do that. We don't get it. We don't. Most of us don't even understand how attraction works. We just destroy our chances with the ex-girlfriend because we lack that understanding. Instead of doing behaviors, learning about ourselves, taking action, and understanding the powers that create attraction, we give ourselves excuses. We actually try to convince ourselves that we can change the situation. That we can get her to stay by pleading begging, buying her things, getting on our knees, right? Pouting. Some of you even go so far as shedding them tears, right? And even further, some of you go, if you leave me, you know, I'll kill myself. How many of you have done that? Oh, yeah, you tried everything. Management by guilt, right to the hilt. That's what you did. You tried everything. You convinced yourself that you could change her mind. You're not trying to work on the attraction. You're just trying to win her back for the moment. And she could see right through it. Right? This does nothing to begging and pleading. The conning. Right? No. If anything, it's a turn off for her. She's going to look at you like you're not even a man anymore. Because you're not even acting like you're acting like a big baby. And so here you are pleading and no, it's not attractive. It doesn't work. And that's worse for you. Now she's really not attracted to you because you just put on a diaper. So no, she doesn't want a baby. Not at all. Right. You have to understand that the attitudes and behaviors to create attraction. You know what I mean? You got to go back to doing those things. Go back to that. What were you like before? Pick up some of those qualities, you know, understand what what attention were you given? What were you doing that made that situation work? You know, so we have to admit, though, if we're honest with ourselves, attraction does fade. That's true. Uh, most women, when they do, they feel a lot less attraction, you know, and it fades over time. Somewhere along the line, something happened. You did something, and she lost this attraction. It's almost like a leaky tap. It started slow, and boom. Once it opened all the way, she just started losing it. And gradually, over time, all that water flowing right out the door. And there she goes. And there are things that do kill this attraction. There are there are a few things that you can think about that kill the attraction through time. And see, as men, we got to look at ourselves and understand that uh, there are times when we get a little bit too needy, right? That tears down some of that attraction when you're too needy. Think about that. You need your food, you need your clothes, you need somebody to baby you, you need an emotional support, you you know, you're just become a problematic person, 
so you get too needy. And once you get too needy, it's almost like you're being too greedy. She don't want to have it anymore. And that's not attractive. So you can't be too needy. You got to have a certain part of you that can stand up and, you know what I mean, and be straight and be able to handle certain business. You can't be too needy. You got to hold your half. I think a relationship's like a balance. Think of it like a scale. See, when you get too needy, you get too heavy, right? And when you get too heavy, it starts to weigh down on people's nerves. So we have a tendency at times to get too needy. You can't get too needy. And even the opposite of that, and I've seen it happen, getting too clingy. That tears down that attraction too. It's a turn off. Getting too clingy where you're always seeking too much attention. You know what I mean? And you just, everywhere they go, right? You're just there and you're just always needing that support or you're never letting them breathe or you're on them about every little thing or you're not giving them their space. You're too clingy. And the most famous one of all that a lot of us have problems with is this jealousy thing. Getting too jealous. When a man's too jealous and he's acting up and he's inquiring too much, he's getting hyped up or he's acting suspicious or he's making accusations or being aggressive, just all sorts of negative behavior comes out because of this jealousy. Warranted or not, the behavior is a real turnoff. It's not attractive. And that, and it's about their insecurity, right? These are like viruses to women. It gets in your mind. It sabotages your mind, your body, and your spirit. And it eats away at that attraction. Right? And your girlfriend or your wife does not appreciate that at all. And just these things. Right? When you get into these modes. The needy mode. The jealousy mode, clingy mode, it leads to a downward spiral, right? The relationship is on its way down the drain. And you see, I think we need to get some clarification here because when I say neediness, there are actually some people out there are going to go, what do you mean by neediness? It's probably different for everyone. Neediness is what I told you, but if we need to break it down, I'm going to let you know it like this. It's like a person that has confidence, relatively happy person, they meet a girl that, you know, they care about and they form a happy relationship with. And it progresses through time, right? Constant communication, very enthusiastic. You're both making each other feel very good. You're both confident, right? And you become independent people. But as time goes on, you start getting dependent on each other more and more. And the feelings are put into the mix. And when the way she treats you and the way you treat her is wonderful and you're getting validation that you're both in a happy relationship now since the beginning of that relationship you communicated regular let's say texting daily you know making sure checking on each other you know it's all great however there comes a time where that texting starts to slow down and decrease dramatically and see now you are used to the regular text. And so now that texting that you're used to has decreased dramatically. And so your anxiety and your stress starts to take over. And then your feelings get hurt. And that validation starts to dissipate. And you start getting worried. And then you start acting needy towards your girlfriend or your wife. Right? And see, they don't like it because it's smothering them and 
They have business to take care of. However, you had needs that were met and they're not being met anymore. So you start acting a little bit up or being accusatory. And next thing you know, distance starts occurring between the two of you. So instead of making her feel attracted to you, as you did in your initial stages of the relationship, she starts to distance herself. You get too needy, right? And next thing you know, the attraction dissipates. And it fades away. And that is very, un, very, very, very unfortunate for you. Because at this same time, there's a guy at her workplace that is a good looking fellow. So when she's distancing herself from you, she may see a little bit of attraction in someone else because yours has faded, right? Due to your actions or your insecurities or what have you. So the attraction is gone for you. However, maybe this fresh face, the attraction might go up. Now, let's not assume that it happens in every case, but it's a very good possibility that, they, you know, they still have feelings, right? They do. And it could be for, you know, somebody else that's got a better attitude, who's maybe not acting this way. And so, boom. So then what happens is, you know, this person is happy, they're confident, right? So this triggers attraction in her, right? So she starts getting to the point where she's going to give this person more attention, right? What have you? And you, of course, you being you, you get a little jealous. And this makes your confidence lower. And you start acting more like someone who's not as rational, controlling. And this is also bringing a relationship downward. Right? It's a combination of things. Your jealousy, your neediness. And see, now that you realize that, what are you going to do about it? I mean, first you got to stop with those behaviors. Right? Neediness, jealousy, all that. You got to cut it out. You got to move beyond that. You got to stop all that texting. So she's out now. What are you going to do? You're begging for her to come back. Sending her flowers. Showing up at her work. Texting relentlessly. You got to stop that. These behaviors are counterproductive. They're not going to help you at all. So let's say she's gone. And you want her back. Which most of you do. Now besides getting crazy and stalking and doing all that foolishness. Which is totally unnecessary. Now you really have three choices when you really think about it. Realistically. And one choice is move on, right? The other one is move on. Uh, it's gone. It's not going to work, whatever you do. Uh, you know it's been long. You both kind of aren't really interested. So you realize she's gone. You're not really interested. Then you've made up your mind. Let her move on and you move on. Second is that you decide that you be friends, which... I highly doubt that will even work. And the third one is you try to get her back. Now, how do you get your ex-girlfriend back? Now, there are ways. Now, I'm going to tell you, the odds are not in your favor. However, you, you may have a chance, depending on if you do a thorough evaluation. And what I mean by that is you are going to have to be realistic and you're going to have to say to yourself, first of all, I've got to establish, even though I missed it, i got to establish what are some of the reasons, if I can, on this breakup. First of all, i got to decide and be cl clear on who broke up with who, right? Was it my purposeful neglect or was she just had enough? So you got to decide. If she's walked away from you, you got to figure, try to figure out why she broke up with you, you know? Whatever it is you did, you know, you need to discover that. And it's not going to be easy. All right? There are ways you could go about it. But you need to, 
own up to whatever it is and figure out why she dumped you. And I'd have to say that, as I mentioned earlier, one is, did she lose that attraction for you? Did she stop feeling attracted to you? Right? Did it, your relationship go stale? Right? Basically. Or, and there's a way to know if she, her attraction was an issue. Okay, just think about your relationship that you were in with your ex. Think about even months ago, even possibly a year and try to answer these questions to yourself. Were you too nice to her? Most of the time. Too nice. I mean, too nice. You know, every time you turn around, you were just right there. We talked about that even, right? Um, did you do everything she asked every time on time? Right? You know where I'm going with this, right? Were you always there at her beck and call every little second of the day? Every time turned around, she was there and you were catering to her. Every demand and desire. You behaved like a you-know-what. An inferior. And she behaved like the master. Someone who is well above your pay grade. So she's had the hook. You've been sitting there doing everything you possibly could do at her beck and call. See, what you have to understand, uh, I believe that many women, not all women, they're more attracted to men who perceive to be at least a little better than them in some sort of way. Uh, they all want equity, but they want to know that a man's going to be a man to a certain degree, right? Um, so I think women can be attracted to men who demonstrate that they value themselves. Now, I know we've been taught to compliment our women and tell them they look good. Oh, yes, we do. We do that. However, if you are giving her compliments frequently, right, you start to be perceived as someone who is like an admirer of her. See, do you take a different position, right? Like, you could be perceived as like a fan and she's a star. And stars never date their fans, right? They might date other stars like celebrities, but they're not going to date their fans. And were you one of those ones that fooled yourself that, oh, let me just buy her off. Let me just give her gifts consistently, right? Let me get her approval through these gifts. Whatever she wants, she got it. So you're trying to win her over. However, you put her in that superior position because you are trying so hard and you're buying her every little thing that she wants. So now she's in this position, right? Where now you're being perceived as less than, see? Because now you're doing all these things. So now she's in control. And now she feels that, hey, this is a role I'm enjoying and I'm taking advantage of. And I would have to say it's women, many, not all, but there are many. They're just not attracted to men that they feel superior to. So if you're buying so many gifts, you know, you got to... Uh, Understand that this can reduce the attraction and harm the relationship when you're overdoing it. I mean, have you made it very clear, crystal clear to your woman? Hey, baby, you're the most important thing in my life. I am committed to you. I want to be with you and you are to be with me and we are going to be together forever. Oh, so if you said some of this stuff to her frequently, right? And even if it's infrequent, if you're using that all the time, just remember that's not working either. See, see, we assume if we say those things, we're building them up and they're going to love it because they are the center of our world. And we are telling them this. So this is supposed to impress them. Well, unfortunately, this is misguided. Women want to know that they are important to you. 
However, they want to know that you have other priorities and activities in your life as well that don't include her. She should be confident in herself. She doesn't need to be the center of your world. She just might need to be a part of your world like you need to be a part of hers. But all that center of the world ide ideology is just not kicking. It's not working. You made your life all about her. You know, um, they get bored with that. Right? They don't want to be won over too fully. It makes them think that they could do better and that there may be other options out there for them. It, it's going to get them to thinking, right? Maybe uh, I am so great. Maybe, um, you know, um, somebody else might think I'm great as well. Don't big them up too much. Remember that. Keep it into perspective, right? They need to have some sort of challenge with their man. They want to feel that they have won you over, but not all of you, not 100% of you. No, don't do it. Take your time. Remember, all you men out there who are dropping everything and giving everything all the time, every day, on time, being there at the beck and call, that's dangerous. It's too much power. You got to balance it out more. You see, she understands a high value man is going to make her work a little harder to earn and keep this commitment going. See, you don't want her to be questioning or doubting your value. This is going to lead to lost attraction. This overachiever that she has in front of her. You know, this stressing of this commitment almost feels like control at times. It indicates that you have no other viable dating options or relationship options or life goals or, you know, anything that's going beside this person. And that could be a lot because there's also the side that this person might say, hey, wait, that's too much for me. I don't want to be that person where you put your whole world in front of me and I feel responsible for it. No. You don't want to do that. So if you've done these things that I've mentioned and you're trying to get them back, you have to be realistic and own that behavior because that's how you start to get them back when you realize some of the behaviors that you've engaged in that have actually contributed to this loss of a relationship. I just want to clarify that I look at this as relating to mate value. And given value in a relationship is, see, if you are a high value mate, then you value yourself. You don't give out too much, regardless of you're male or female. But I believe that if she's the high value mate and she thinks this because you're pursuing her almost all the time, her attraction subconsciously concludes that, you know, you're not a high value mate. She is, but you're not. And that's problematic. So you, you need to remain a high value guy. I mean, how many guys out there actually told their girl? Think back. I mean, really think back. How many guys actually said they love you before your girl said she loves you? Right? Whether you were insecure or you just had to confess or see, that's the thing. Right? Right there, you're demonstrating your low value. In the sense that you are giving it all up. You're not being patient. You're just saying it right out. And they're not waiting. They want to be treated with respect. They want you to be patient. And when they're ready, they'll let you know. But if you're an eager beaver and you're sitting up there telling them, oh, I love you. See, right there she knows. See? This high-value guy is not as high as I thought he was. He's a low-value guy. He needs me. He really, really needs me. And you know what I'm going to do? Hmm. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to try to tame this person. You know? You see, I'm going to say something that's rather controversial. But I decided that I'm going to give the truth. Whether a lot of us want to hear it or not. But the truth is, many women are of the submissive nature. And they want their man to be the opposite of that. right? They want their man to be dominant. 
leaving decisions to her is considered submissive behavior by you to her, right? Like, sure, she has her decisions, but all decisions, no. It places her in deciding if she is going to take that dominant role, a role that the female kind does not generally take naturally. See, so what happens is if you don't take that role that she's expecting to the dominating role of being able to make good decisions to right that wrong, keep that direction, guide properly. See, they might think you're weak for not taking the lead and dominating. And once she perceives that weakness in you, the attraction goes right out the window. And if you find that she may be complaining or really getting on you with all these comments, negative comments, and you always end up apologizing. Sure, there's times to apologize, but when you do that too often, letting them get away with giving you the crap, you know, this is a recipe for disaster. It's called lost respect. And any respect that she had for you, mm -mm. she's losing it. You know, she wants that higher value guy who's worthy of her respect and time, who would not tolerate too much BS from her, right? So this lost respect, this translate to lost attraction because a woman cannot feel attraction for a man who she doesn't respect or feel is superior. Even if you went as far as saying sorry all the time, you know, even when she gave you crap, being that lovey-dovey, kissy-kissy. You know those guys. Now, are you giving her a lot more kisses than she's giving you? Right? Oh, you call it affection. Right? But you're up there looking for it all the time. Remember I told you about that needy? Be careful. You're trying too hard. You're trying harder than her. Your male value, your mate value is decreasing. Right? She sees you trying this hard and it is interpreted to be compensating for your lower mate value. Right? Oh, you need a kiss all the time. All reassuring, reassuring. Now, there's people that kiss. But too much when a guy's all looking for a kiss, that just, I see some of them shake it off. It's, uh, it's just not attractive to, to them. They don't want it. Women want kisses, but not like all that. You know? They can have pets for all that. They don't want you sitting up there kissy kissy too much. Not most. So be careful with that. That lovey dovey, right? And one of the most secretive places where you might have to show some of that male dominance will be in that bedroom. I mean, are you one of those guys that's got to ask for permission for every position change going on? Are you letting her take control? Well, Maybe once in a while, but you got to have some control in that bedroom. Got to take the lead. Can't be waiting all the time or sitting back there behaving submissively, right? That's a place where it could really cause some problems in the bedroom where you're figuring out, I think, you know, you can listen to them, respect them for sure, but you still got to play your role, right? You got to play your role even in the bedroom. You can't be afraid to touch. Don't get aggressive and stupid about it. Be respectful. But play your role. Sitting up there asking for permission for every little thing that you do within reason, right? We always have to maintain that respect, but you got to play your role, right? That's what you got to do. Can't be sitting up there doing all that submissive all the time. It's not good. It does not work in most cases. And take a look at your photos. In those photos, take a look at who's looking at who. Is she staring at the camera where you're staring at her, right? Giving yourself away, showing that you're infatuated. Well, there are other reasons why a girl walks out on you or gets out of that relationship, for sure. Because you might be another fella out there. One of those ones that um, they're too hard to get a hold of too hard to tie down into a secure relationship. You know, it's entirely possible for a girl to be super attracted to her boyfriend and still dump him no matter what. 
It's just a situation where she wants to have you, but feels she cannot. And the reason is, is because of something about your behavior. It's making her feel as if you're not really committed to her. Right? She's attracted to you. However, she doesn't feel you can give her what she wants. And she might need something in that relationship. She might need some support. She doesn't want you to be out there running around chasing girls or texting all these different numbers. Or when she's talking to you, you're thinking about something else and not really talking directly to her. So she doesn't have your attention. Right? You're trying to make sure that She's not included in your life because you've got too many things going on and you're hard to tie down. See, it's dangerous to do too much running around because, see, with many women, not all women, but there are constraints in certain relationships. See, women in certain environments, they have this thing called the biological clock and it's ticking. And in terms of fertility, you better believe that there's a part in their mind that says certain things have to go on within certain times, like at a certain age, they want to do this, certain age, they want to have a baby, be in a relationship. So there's a time frame going on, right? And it's in their mind. There's a goal to having children, like I said, um, that's a big one. That's a reason for a woman... To see, look, um, there's no progress being made in this relationship. And this indicates to them that they're, you know, they're not on course to achieve what they want to achieve. Now, we're not assuming all women. We're just saying we have to hit some truth out there. There are women who want to be in committed relationships and too much time going by where there's no commitment. Then that could be very problematic because... There's nothing wrong with them wanting to be in relationships and having a family. Absolutely nothing. But are you that type of person that's giving them that? Maybe you're not. Maybe, you know, maybe you're not interested in at all having a kid. So maybe they fit. You didn't say it, but you showed it and they walk because they're like, you're not interested in what I'm interested in. We don't have the same goals. We don't have the same mindset. You are wasting my time. I need to get a higher value guy who understands that I'm in a relationship and I want to make this work. So there are things that you need to be aware of, right? They need to notice this progress. It shows them that eventually, if you stay in this relationship, it could lead to delivering, right, what they really want, whether it's kids or, you know, a commitment solidarity, right? That is something that's in their mind. So it could stay for a period of time. It could be from six months to a year. Um, this relationship has to progress. And if it doesn't, or you just won't be around, you are not suitable for her. I mean, they just get this sixth sense when things aren't going away. But there are ways that you could tell if there's a lack of relationship progress going on, you know, like um, not being an exclusive couple, you know, not moving in together. And if she's hinted towards that after a couple months and you're not picking up on these hints, that could be problematic. Or... If, and we got to say it, if you're using contraception, if you've discussed it with her at length, that you don't, you're going to have a baby together and you both agree. However, you're using contraception after she's told you all these things, months into the relationship. Or you're not asking her to marry you as she's asked or hinted. She ain't really asked, but she's hinted and let everybody else know. But you, but she's been hinting and she wants to marry within a certain period of time. If you're not game for that, right, she's not going to be around too long. She's figuring, uh-uh, you're wasting my time. And what about those guys out there who are mean? 
nasty to their women, you know, to their partner, right? You had a healthy relationship when it started. However, you want to be a part of the bad boys club, right? Because you heard the rumors that nice guys finished last. No, you can still be nice and keep your value. You just got to know what's up. You know, you can't be too much of a bad boy. Because then she's going to start thinking that you disconnected from her. Because of this lack of emotional availability. You're overdoing this bad boy stuff. So she's losing interest, right? Um, and she's not thinking you're going to be a reliable partner. That's the problem. So you could be somewhat of a little bad boy, but too much of a bad boy starts to become arrogant, emotionally connected to himself, not her, and it becomes problematic. And then you take the we and you turn it into me and she's lost. So you can't, you know, you can't get too close to a bad boy because they act like little children sometimes, right? So she doesn't feel she can get close to you. And she needs a relationship, some sort of closeness. And you know what? If she doesn't get some of that, she's going to walk the other way, period. And sometimes it's really about location, moving. Just think about your relationship. Did one of you move to a new location? New area. Is it long distance now? Are you having difficulty with the relationship? That's a big one as well, right? But it could be overcome when you think about it, right? Because if you broke up due to distance, it might be easier for you to get back into that relationship if you understand what you have to do. You might still have a chance. I mean, she still has some emotion. It was just the distance and the separation. And you don't really see each other anymore. So there are things you can work on, right? Like it's a lot easier than trying to get her back over her seeing someone else immediately or having another guy you got to win her back from. No, so it might be she still cares about you. And maybe if you move back, become more familiar and learn to work with her, you know, on the relationship. Hey, you could possibly win her back. However, just remember. If you're trying to win her back, you might have to spend some time apart, giving her some space. This is important, very important if you're trying to win her back, right? It's just a part of the process because after a breakup, you know, it's clear that the feelings for you, she doesn't have anymore, right? So anything that you do just might agitate her. So really some time and some space, this could be really productive you know just make sure you um you're not calling her all the time being the eager beaver you know the question is how much time is enough time well unfortunately you might have to wait to see if she contacts you at all right patience you know and i mean if you're waiting and you're patient and you understand things have changed, and you want to be back in that relationship, you might have to take your time. Now, remember, she might contact you during your waiting period, right? Now, depending on if you have a child together or if you live together, um, the time will differ. However, I recommend that if a little time goes by and she decides to contact you, <coughs> hopefully not within the first week, because if they contact you immediately within the first week or something, it might mean that, you know what, um, they're just missing you, but things will go back to being the same. If you don't want things to be the same as they were, then remember, um, you got to be patient. You have work to do. You got to get your confidence back. See, because that was something that was lacking somewhere. You got to become more confident. And you got to come across more confident. And you're going to have to probably use some body language. 
and you know be more a little bit more dominant if you have to be if one of the reasons why you were not as dominant if your male value right was low you got to bring it up right so you got to be patient you got to work on this confidence maybe be a little bit more dominant right and um i think you will see maybe if she's really interested in you she'll take some time and possibly uh meet up with her in person and um she'll see that you have understood what's going on you may even appear more attracted to her when she sees you after you've had that waiting period and you meet up again she might see you as a little sexier and more attractive because you've improved your body language right like this stuff does work and it's hard to explain sometimes but there are ways you can improve your confidence your vibe that you the aura that you give right to your significant other right so how do you do that well there are simple ways you could do it sit and stand up straight don't slouch keep your shoulders down not hunch neck straight not leaning forward spread yourself out take up lots of space smile more with your eyes than your mouth these are simple but they are effective ways very effective ways to improve your vibe you know and your perceived confidence level you know it does take a little bit to get used to but you can start them immediately and this is just the beginning right it's just something that you got to build through time just to learn to hang out with her again you got to learn you got to learn from the lessons that you have learned from this relationship falling apart you got to go back do some reflection get it together you know you can attract her back without contacting her you really can just think of the tools that you have at your disposal, like social media. It could be very helpful in this time when you're taking your break and you're not communicating with her at all. You could post some pictures of you and your friends out there having some fun. Giving the impression that you're clearly not concerned about the breakup. This will indicate a higher mate value. Right? These pictures will show that maybe the breakup doesn't seem to have affected you too badly, right? Maybe that's what she'll see. You know, evidently you feel you could replace her if you needed to. Because if you couldn't replace her, she would see this. And you would be acting as you were before, desperate. And they don't like desperate. They want confidence. So you have to display some confidence. And this is one way that you display some confidence. And the truth be told, if she has the impression that you are capable of attracting other women and that you could actually replace her, this might increase her perception of you and your mate value might go up, right? And it might even attract her back towards you. See? And this is... One thing that we have to realize that your sign of a high mate value in the eyes of this woman, it goes up exponentially when they perceive that you have the ability to track other women, right? When they see that you can even get to those exes that you had, this is a sign of a higher value mate. And this is ringing in their minds right there. They're thinking about that. Now, remember, I don't want it to backfire on you where you start running around with the ex. That's not going to do it at all. If anything, the show's over. You don't want to do that. You're not trying to make them super jealous. But you want to let them know that you have some options, right? Uh, because they might think, oh, my goodness. Uh, they might be um, hooking up or something, right? You know? This might work for you right? in your favor rather than again and as i said if she did see you running around with the ex i mean she wouldn't like it for sure but it would still up your mate value for sure right it would raise it to the roof as they say right and that mate value 
increase is going to really supersede any feelings that she might have of jealousy. If anything, she might want you more. Right? It's going to shine through. It will be the deciding factor in which she decides she's either going to be with you or not. It's just the way it works. Women are wired to find the highest mate value in men that they can. And sadly enough, this is one of the reasons why women go back to men who do them wrong or who misbehave or who cheat on them because they have this high mate value, right? It stays high in their mind. So even when she's encountering some problems, she's going to overlook it because that's what she values. A man who has the highest mate value. That's what she wants. So if you even show her that you could have someone else, that's going to make her think a little bit twice. This perceived ability to attract other women could work in your favor. You don't actually have to do anything so if you do want to reestablish this contact in an attractive way right after this little bit of breakup that you had you might even be feeling a little desperate especially when it happens invulnerable and sensitive you don't want to do that and you're going to want to communicate but you got some discipline right and you understood that you need to maintain some confidence and put things in order. However, some of you have challenges with that, with that over texting. And that's not good. You don't want to do that. See, there's ways you go about texting. You don't want to be, you know, she texts you and then you're texting her a hundred times. You know, that's these are just techniques that I'm showing you that you need to apply, right? You need to kind of copy her reply times. You know, don't overdo it. Just copy. If she texts you, then you take your time and respond accordingly. I mean, if she takes a long time, then you need to take even longer to respond. You want to give her the impression that you are a high-value guy. And that uh, you may be in demand. And, yeah, you, you may want her. But... You don't necessarily need her. And this is just a technique. Even though you do need her, you want to give her that impression. And this is the type of attractive, nonverbal message she needs to see from you. If she's going to start feeling comfortable and attracted to you again, it's a texting strategy that works 99% of the time. And please only send messages that are as long as hers. I'm trying to write a book talking about all your feelings and how you want it back. No, keep it consistent and congruent. Make sure the topics are fun, lighthearted, and they're positive. Keep it positive. Make sure you're amusing more than anything. Right? Build rapport. Connect with her. Right? You're trying to attract her back. Right? You want her to feel relaxed. You want her interaction with you to be of a receptive one. So you don't pressure. You take your time. You be patient. Keep your text fun, light, and positive. Leave that other stuff, that heavy-duty emotional rationale that you want to bring into the conversation on the shelf. Let it go for now. The moment you start doing that, She's going to start reminiscing about how bad it was in the past. And she's going to think, uh, I did the right thing by getting rid of this guy. He's just too needy. He's got all these problems, too much baggage. So you, that's the last thing you want to do is bring that heavy duty negative into the conversation. And remember, texting is just one way. You might have to, given the opportunity, if you have to meet face to face, then you got to make that move. You got to have that conversation. It's much more intimate. However, you got to make sure she's ready for it, right? Let her tell you when she wants to meet. Don't be overbearing. 
You know, try to be in touch with her feelings and keep your emotions in check. Like, if you want to have any sort of communication, be patient when it comes to face to face, right? Build that rapport, get that relationship going. You know, time passes. You know, face to face, um, it may become more important as time passes. You might even initially start with texting. And then it might lead to the face-to-face as time passes. But if you are in it to win it, right, you have to be patient. And I think the face-to-face is really going to uh, affect their emotions much better. And when it comes to meaning, make sure that you give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe be about 15 minutes late. When you have to meet. But just the. Doesn't make you look so desperate. To have her back. Or to impress her. Just desperation. Desire to impress. You know. They associate. This with a lower value man. So you don't want to show that. That's just a real turn off. Just show up a little bit late. You know it could be less. It could be 10 minutes. You just want to get rid of that desperation factor, right? Make sure when you do arrive, you sit next to each other rather than across from each other. You know, that's way comforted or touched if you're ready for that. It will be easier if you're next to her, not in front of her. It can help bring back the closeness you guys had before. But just make sure you have the indication that, that that's what she wants. It might not be the first meeting. It might be the tenth meeting. Who knows? But this is what you need to take into account. You see, so you might just have regained some of that attraction through these meetings. However, you want to move it in the positive direction, whereas she wants to be exclusive with you. And it can be very challenging, this part. Some people struggle with this part. Because they don't know what to do. You have the attraction back. So you need to get out of your own way and let getting back together happen on its own. You need to know that the mistakes you made in the past, you can analyze them. But you want to avoid them and prevent yourself from sabotaging this getting back together process. You know, it's supposed to happen fairly, naturally, and it will, given a little bit of time and effort. Well, it appears you're making some progress. However, this is a very delicate situation at this point. And this is where many men make big mistakes. And what they do is they start that conversation about commitment and getting back together permanently. That's the biggest mistake you can make initially when you're at this stage, right? Starting that discussion about getting back together. That's not what you do. You will never be the one to do that. You do not want to be the one who talks about when. No, if you bring it up, It tells them that you don't have other dating options in your life. And your level, your mate value level shrinks. Right? So you do have options. Don't be that eager beaver. Let them start that discussion. All right? About getting back together. Think about it. Because if you do fail to mention, which is the greatest idea... Getting back together, it might make her think you do have other options, right? A man without options hmm, would mention getting back together. And she doesn't want a desperate man. She wants a man who can. Understand? Well, I want to say thank you to all my listeners. Great conversation. And... um. For all those people who are encountering this situation, there are many different techniques that you can use to try to work things out. 
However, you have to be strong enough to move on if it comes to that. And um, we cannot assume that all women are the same in no way possible. Very complex. But we're just talking about certain things that you can do if you're trying to recover and understand the relationship. What happened, what you can do about it, if anything at all. So please be like the wise old bird and spread the word. Thank you very much, my listeners, and take care of yourself.